What is going on everyone? Rough here and welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Warlander. Now Warlander is currently on Steam. It is in a play test as of right now. It is a free play test. All you have to do is ask for access and you can get into it. Now it is described in Steam as harness the almighty powers of godlike warriors, clerics, and mages with a unique style that meshes a medieval inspired setting fantastical items and abilities, and even powerful robots. Master siege weapons and cataclysmic spells to control the battlefield and destroy the enemy's core. Now you play as three classes. Clerics are your healers on the battlefield. Your warriors are just that. They are warriors. They are the ones that are in the front of the battle. They have high HP pools and they deal very good damage. And your mage is your ranged attack. Now, they all do have the ability to go ranged at times. The Cleric and the Warrior can carry some sort of a hand cannon, and they are actually quite effective. So as far as range goes, all three do cover range, but the main, main, main focus of these is Cleric heals, Warrior tank, and Mage ranged. Now, upon playing the game, there is pre-made sets already for your characters, but you can create your own avatar and it is broken down pretty nicely. You have your face, skin tone, eye color, hairstyle, hair color, armor color, a paint job on them, an emblem, and even how they sound in the game. There is actually voice lines within the game. Now, you can obviously choose to show your head equipment or not. That is totally up to you. Now, moving on, each character that you create, regardless of class, does have a basic equipment tab. Weapons and skills 1, weapons and skills 2, and talents now basically what that is is it is two separate styles for each character with your cleric and your warrior your main melee is going to be your skills one usually and then skills two is going to be your ranged attack now with your mage is totally different because everything is ranged so you could have different classes as far as what elements you run on each skill base and one could be lightning focused and the next one could be fire where they each do damage in their own way. Now, as far as the talents go, those are just perks that you earn along the way randomly after matches and that you can plug on there. Now, the big thing that you need to focus on on the screen is it says total CP and I'm showing you the cleric right now and it says 140 out of 200. That is how many character points you have that you can put into that character. Now, if you look down at the bottom, it says change title. You can actually change the title based on what tier you have unlocked with that certain character. And then the higher the title, the higher the CP. And I'm going to show that as well with one of my mages that I have leveled up. You can see that the title actually pushes up the amount of CP. Now, this will allow you to equip better weapons, better gear, and more talents because you have more total character points to work with. When you have a very low character that's only like 200, you're going to burn through those real fast and you're going to have a very basic character that's not going to have a ton of armor and do a ton of damage. Now, there is a catch to it and we're going to get into that later on in the video. Now, one of the cool things that I do want to add into this whole section where we're talking about armor and weapons is the ability to have some sort of customization to it as far as cosmetics go. Now, you can somewhat build your own character to look a certain way now there isn't a ton of options and you are limited based on the rarity of the item but the higher the rarity of the item the more options that you have to unlock and add these uh, new cosmetics now they do cost silver now it's not something that you're gonna have to really worry about when it comes to affording so you can really customize your characters look to the most of your wanting or ability that you can based on the items and gear that you have if you wanted to go as far as changing their emotes and all of their macros that are in the game, you can do that. Now you are restricted somewhat because we're still in beta. I'm sure there's going to be more upon release, but there is the option to do so. So if you want to have a certain style to your emotes or your macros or what you say at the end of a match, that is totally up to you. Now, one of the unique things that you get to do with all these characters that you create and use is you get to build a deck with them. With each deck, you can have different ways that you want them set up. You could have a deck that you want to make sure that you run when you are attacking, or a deck that you have for defending, 
Or in my case, I just run a single deck with the main characters that I use. I main mage, and then when I'm not on my mage, I'm running a warrior. So for me, I run my low level warriors and mages so I can start out the match with them. And then as I go on, I'm going to unlock the other ones. Again, we're gonna go over the whole Valor thing here in a bit. It's kind of a catch and it's kind of frustrating at times if you're not having a good match, but uh, it's definitely a cool feature and we're gonna get into it. On to the gameplay, obviously you can just join a two army battle or a five army battle. You can see in the bottom left where it allows you to change that. And there is an option for running as a commander. Running as a commander basically means you get to ping the battlefield and you get to tell people where to go. When you do queue up for a match, it is gonna put you into a training area. I didn't go over the tutorial. There is a pretty good tutorial with this game that you're gonna play through. And it is gonna put you back into the tutorial area. And you're gonna be able to kind of play around with your loadout in that area. Unfortunately, there isn't the option to change it while you're in here. So make sure you build your decks ahead of time to kind of cover everything. If you're especially experimenting with loadouts, make sure you have a deck that you've selected that has characters to do that and backups. And you can also be prompted. You'll see at the very top, it'll say searching for battle. And then once it's ready to go, you will be sent in and it will tell you who your commander is, who your squad is, and then you will be able to then vote what kind of tactics you want to have as a team. Basically, all it does is assault, balanced, or defensive. It basically means how many of each role you have. So for example, assault tactics has three assault squads, one special ops, and one defense, and that's it. Where balanced or defensive has more defending squads, and that's basically their assigned role for the next match. The catch is trying to get everyone to do it, but that is the assigned role of your squad for that next match. Now, the next screen is really unique. This is where once you have gotten in and you have selected what kind of tactics you want. Now, for example, this is a voted on offensive tactic. So you have one castle guard, three attacking squads or assault squads, and then one special ops squad. What's going to happen is there's going to be a countdown for each individual assigned role and you simply volunteer for it as your squad. And then the most volunteers of a squad of a particular role will then earn that. And of course, if there's a tie, then it's gonna be randomly chosen. But this gives you an opportunity, especially if you're playing with friends, to say, hey guys, gals, what do you wanna play? Oh, you know what? I wanna play special ops. So in this case, we're not gonna volunteer for anything until the very end and hopefully get that assigned to us. Once all the voting and volunteering is done, there will be another breakdown where it shows again your commander, who's in your squad, and there will be numbers over their heads in the game and on the minimap so you can keep track of your squad. It is easier to stay together, it's just a matter of doing so. But again, it tells you your squad mates, what kind of strategy you're running, and of course, what you have been assigned to do as your mission. Once you have gotten all that done and selected your deck, if you are prompted that. Now, if you only have one deck, you won't be prompted to select it again. It'll just automatically load you in here, which is going to be your briefing. And this is where it's gonna tell you what your role is. So basically as an attack squad, it says that our mission is to attack storm enemy castles and destroy their core. And it breaks it down even farther as a briefing that it gives you specific missions that you have to do in order to earn your rewards at the end of the match. Now for us as an attacking squad, we have to break through their defenses, which means we have to get into the castle and infiltrate it. And then we will have to damage the core by over 50%. There will be some tips that you can click through while things are loading in. And one of the tips that I want you to really pay attention to is the Valor system. And this is the best place that I can show you it. And it basically tells you Valor points are earned based on a player's performance during a battle. Accumulating points will increase your level. You may deploy characters of the same title rank as your current Valor level during battle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up a screenshot of my characters that I have loaded in. And you're going to notice that they're going to have stars by their titles. Now that's how many stars of Valor I have to earn before I can even load into the game with them. And that is going to be determined by how well I play. My suggestion when it comes to building a deck based on Valor is don't just have a 
really high level character that you really, really like, and then a bunch of low levels. Because what's going to happen is, is you're going to have to play at that low level until you hit that high Valor count. Throw in somebody that's Valor rank 2, a Valor rank 3, and then maybe you're 4 and you're 5. And if you're lucky enough, you get to it, but you're going to have a better chance of getting to it if you are actually playing as a higher tiered character along the way, because what's gonna happen is, is other people are going to be unleashing higher tier characters. And if you're still sitting on your very, very base one that has no title at all, then you're gonna be outmatched the entire time. And you're most likely not gonna unlock anything. Or if you do, it's gonna be very, very close to the end of the match and you're not gonna be able to utilize them. And then if you do get them early enough and they die, they have really long cooldowns. So it's nice to have different Valor level characters as you're playing the game. Currently, there is only one map in the game for two army battles. And you can see that it's the same layout every time you're either red or blue. Now, the way things are laid out is you have your castles on each side. And then you have points A and B in the middle. C is by one castle. D is in the middle on a flank. And E is on the other side by the red castle. One of the things that you could see is there is an icon for a catapult at the very top. That catapult is what is the main mission of a special ops group. That catapult is used to take out gates, all of the different kinds of turrets that they have. And those things are going to take your team out quite easily if that catapult is not taken care of. So special ops teams, do your job and get that catapult. Once you load in, you're going to have a quick little countdown. Now, I loaded in a little late. I believe the countdown is about 20 or 30 seconds. You can get some quick little buffs. They don't really last very long. One buff I'd like to see thrown down. And Clerics, if you're watching this and you have it, throw down your speed buff because it's going to get us out these gates. And it's going to get us to the very first tower much, much faster. A unique ability that they have during the game is actually called a Barrage. And basically what that is, is it's a whole bunch of fire arrows that you can shoot off. And you can have others join in with you. So if you have it, let others get in with you. It's going to prompt you on the screen how many have joined you. And the more you have, the more damage you're going to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this battle just kind of play out a little bit for you. And you're going to be able to see how you kind of just clash head to head. And you have to work together as a team to really take each other out. And you're gonna see a mix of different abilities as well. Now I'm using lightning that you can shoot out of your fingertips and crows that are basically disruptors. You're gonna see other things like whirlwinds and lightning bolts and of course melee attacks. But I'm gonna let this play out for you for a little bit here until we get up to the siege weapon and I'll start explaining that to you as well. Now, as you get up and you start building your siege weapon, you can work together and five different people can push it at one time. Now, one of the catches that you have to do now is you have to slam the gate, break it open and continue through. One of the things that you have to do when you're doing this is paying attention to what's going on. Because one of the things that you're gonna notice happens here is that we are getting alerts where it says our core is at 74% now at 48%. That tells me that our defenses did not defend at all. And they got through fast, got into our core, and already defeated us. 
This was one of the fastest matches I have actually had, and it just so happened to be while I was recording for this video. But, it is possible if you do not do your role. So, follow the role that you're given, and you will be successful on this game. You do have a ranking that you can check out, and you can look through and see where you ranked as a player during the game, where you ranked as a squad, and then of course you're going to get rewards based on how well you did during the game. There's different levels of rewards. There's common, there's rare, there's prestige, and mythic, or white, blue, purple, and gold. Now that's pretty much the gameplay, folks. Now you're going to see where you get to unlock titles based on what you do, and if you want to learn how to unlock the titles, just go into your character title select and look at the ones you haven't unlocked yet, and it will tell you what you have to do to do that. And then it will also show you what perks you can do. Now again, that's the gameplay loop, and I hope you enjoyed it. Go on to Steam, join the open beta. It's a ton of fun. I've probably put around 30 hours into it at the, uh, at the start of this video that I made. So if you did enjoy the video, please do me a favor. Like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see some more Warlander, let me know down below in the comments. And of course, until next time, my name is Ruff, and you take care.